Hey there folks, this is David on David's Brain. Welcome back to our ongoing Let's Play of Disco Elysium for the PS4. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, and contribute to my Patreon link's description at the bottom. Alright, last time was a bit of a downer episode where we, uh, let's see. Yeah, where we told about the, uh, duped commercial district. Budget. Keep coming back! That's good, officer! Keep browsing those clothes, keep saving that economy! If he really wants to save the economy, He'd let you pay with net worth. Go over and ask him if you can. Save the economy. That sounds off. Right, anyways, yeah, last time, uh, let's see, reported the missing body. Uh, rem or, let's see, reported the body, broke the news. Oh, yeah, we got seeing sneakers. And anyways, yeah, save the economy. What are you going on about? Haven't you heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash, keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco. Uh, why exactly does the economy need saving, aside from the obvious? Look around, officer. You see all these premium goods just sitting there, not getting bought? We've got to keep the flow of goods moving. Is this really the economy we want to leave to our children? Uh, let's see. Mm, but I don't... Uh, let's see. Hmm. It's, uh, let's see, it's just nature, powerful economies expand, weak economies suicide. Uh, but I don't have children, I think. Too bad, officer. Kids make it all worthwhile. Without kids, who's going to be around to enjoy the economy? Don't let me stop you. Open the box and browse a little. Haven't you heard, officer? Very cool. The economy thanks you, officer. Haven't you heard? Look, is this really the economy we want to leave to our children? Yeah, well, you're right. We gotta save mother economy. That's the spirit. We've all got to do our part. Your part is to open the box and buy some clothes. Haven't you heard? Look, is this really the economy we want to leave to our children? Uh, it's just nature. Powerful economies expand, weak economies go extinct. I can't go extinct, officer. I've got kids to feed. Once an economy goes extinct, it messes up the whole ecosystem. You've got to think about the consequences. Hmm. All right. Well, anyways, I mostly just said that so I could get the extra, uh, the, get the extra buck here. Let's see here. All right. Anyways, uh -uh. Everything's still cool here, officer. Let's see. I knew there was a conceptualization check around. Oh, there it is, a rhetoric check over by the uh, cargo container. Oh, it looks like it only fast travel for those parts there. Okay, okay. Well, I guess it's worth taking a little poke around. Now it's turning into a kind of a snow limbo, man. What's on your mind? Oh, high-grade narcotics. Time to arrest him. Relax. He's merely joking. Okay, what are you actually hauling? Can't even get a few jokes past you, my man. I've got another. They usually get shipped to Grodd and the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market. We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The man taps his finger. Alright, let's see if we could, uh, if we could shake down Chungo here. Looking for... Three T's. How idiomatic. Looking for something odd? Oh, not much anymore. I'm your Apple. apples. is exactly the kind of thing you'd say if you had something to hide. Sounds like a cover story to me. Look, as detective, I come from a long line of lorry men. We got ancient rights and privileges. 
Ramir, tu pick up a load of fucking apples, man. Just my regular Koiko picked apples. Damn, you're not gonna get more out of him on this. He's put up the wall of racism. You said something about the rights and privileges of lorry men. Oh, yeah, they're a big deal. My great grandfather was a carter, had a royal license and everything. We've tried to hold on to our privileges. Hold on, what's a carter? Someone with a cart. What did you think it was? That's how deep into history our thing reaches, before machines. So he was a garbage man? Not at all. We are part of a guild and everything, huh? It's very ancient, very prestigious. Uh, so it, uh, so you're in a carter's guild? God damn right. They've been trying to fuck us out of our heritage in the name of profits. But when they try to replace us, they'll regret it. Huh. Trusting street thugs with their goods is going to fuck him right up the ass. Mark my words. Generations of practice ain't no laughing matter. Oh yeah, there sure fucking is. We have a guild and everything, huh? Hell no. It's a guild. Invitation only. Unions work for the rich fucks. They're basically the same. Been trying to fuck us out of our heritage in the name. Huh. Trusting s Oh, not much anymore. Apples. Apples is exactly the kind of thing you'd say if you had something. Look, eh? Oh, I'm... Damn, you're not gonna get more out of him on this. He's put up the wall of racism. Yeah, well, at least I managed to get something past there. A lorry stuck. The windows. Fumes of heavy fuel... There he is. Like. Hmm. Oh yeah, now I remember. A lorry, a bag, the smell of cigarettes. There's something odd about the passenger seat. The seating fabric has been pulled tight over the lower side of the seat where the toolbox should be. All right, yeah, now I remember this well, part here. A stack of neatly folded papers has been st Bonne prise. Let's see, over the uh, topmost map. This large map displays the elevated motorway called 881. The intake leading to Martinez is marked with a blue X. There's another X on the off-ramp at a place called the Old South. Toll booths at the intakes are marked with a circle. It looks like there are scant few ways of getting onto the elevated motorway that runs over Jamrock. And this person knows them all. There, hundreds of thousands of motor carriages roar on the 881, high above the mess of brown and red roofs that is Jamrock. The commuters don't even look down. The world ceases to exist outside the windshield. Where's the road lead? Takuro through the middle-income neighborhoods there, by the river, and then to Stella Maris and La Delta for work, while the men and women of Jamrock scuttle to their fates below the road. This municipal map, wind, wind rips through the empty hallways of the once great military hospital, now just a ruin under an overgrown park. Beneath the hospital, great sewer tunnels hum and vibrate with life of their own. What's that sound? The rattle of motor carriages and lorries driving through long forgotten tunnels, lit by gaslights. The final map displays a labyrinth of service tunnels left over from the construction of Motorway 881. A few routes have been marked with a pen, where the tunnels and sewers surface near the eminent domain and a traffic island in central Jamrock by the lake. These service tunnels were probably used during the construction of the foundation beneath the motorway. Looks like the smugglers have infiltrated the road network belonging to East Motor Track. The smugglers have infiltrated the motor track. So it would seem. The RCM patrols most of these auxiliary roads, though apparently not all of them. Where does the contraband end up? Hard to say. This distribution network looks certainly large, yet still vague enough. It doesn't reveal much about the Besmerti behind it. Besmerti sounds vaguely familiar. The Besmerti is a Revacholian crime syndicate. They see themselves as the inheritors of the 14 Revacholian Indo tribes 
But really, they're just violent gangs vying for control on the west side of Revachol. With cool names like La Puta Madre and Aura Masta, it's a dark parody. Uh, who do you think's behind this? It's definitely not the Union. They just do some logistics. This operation has spread everywhere in Jamrock. If it's that widespread, then Madre remains the most likely suspect. Here's bad news. There have been attempts at a serious investigation before, but they haven't ended well for those involved. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is a brave man for saying Madre's name without the winces and whispers that usually accompany it. Mm. Best not to disturb the scene. I'll have forensics go over the lorry and pick this up later. The stack of maps looks just like before, barely noticeable. The movie stars look silently by. A metallic drawer. It's an issue. It looks like an article. The Yulen frequency system? I've never heard of that before. I know of FM, AM, UKV, but... It's an issue. It looks like... The Yulen frequency... The pull-out toolbox slides back and close the... All right. Well, anyways, uh, there's a, uh, there's a whole drug smuggling thing. To, uh... Yeah, if we can follow the trace of the smuggler, we might be able to find our eighth hardy. Oh boy, yeah. Right to work. Right to work. Shame on you. Are you a mercenary hired hired by Wild Pines? Hell no. I'm just an honest scab. I won't have talk like that around here. You understand? It just has to be said. That was not a convincing line. Let's see. Is there a tribunal being convened by any chance? Fuck it. Bob. I'm going to interpret that as a yes. There's a tribunal. And it won't be long until it's ready. How about you fuck off now, huh? Okay. Of course. There could be weapons aiming at us right now. Somewhere above, in the buildings. The other Merc. Don't push this, he's thinking. This is not the time. Right, okay. The man's breathing steadiest, but his eyes are still narrow. Slowly, he's trying to get his right-to-work dance back on. Yeah, hopefully we could do something with that cargo container. Hold on, wondering man. How can I help you? The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? Hmm. The man whispered. Oh, I'm surprised you're still up. Your race descent has temporarily halted, but you will fall again. Yeah, I'm not subscribing to this, Dillweed. Let's see, can we get inside? Uh, oh yeah, we might be able to find... Uh, ooh! A giant aspirin on the pillow and a pattern of coffee rings on the armrest. Someone is habitually chilling next to the radio. The file cabinet stands steady as ever. Hundreds of and the same you already went through all remember Leo all items on the, the drawers The payphone hangs mutely on the
Yeah, I haven't been back to this area in a while. This is the Night Watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, Rene Arnaud. Rene left his uniform neatly folded on the table. Take it. It's just there. Who cares? It's not like anyone's gonna need it. Generally speaking, it would be dishonorable to take it. But then, it looks like a military uniform, and wearing that is very honorable. So, a conflict of honor, it's up to you. The chair is not as austere as the rest of the booth. A thin gray pillow is attached to the seat, secured to the stiles by black ribbons. Stale air floods through your nostrils. Not a single mote of dust floats inside your lungs, though. The inside of the booth is immaculate. The drawers are empty, save for old timesheets and receipts. One small box, however, does hold some cheap painkillers. They are slightly out of date. Read the side effects. Oh boy, where to start? Elevated risk of dementia, mini strokes, Prophet's disease, sudden death, hair death, erectile malfunction, critical flatulence, watery blood, black mucus, uncontrollable weeping, increased sensitivity to la opera, <laughs> inoperable joint disorder, total spinal collapse. Don't think about that. Quick, think about something else. Azim. I'm a cop. I have cop things to do. Murders to solve. People to help. Kim's counting on me. The enormity of the case before you dwarfs the list of side effects. You can't even see the side effects anymore. They're nothing to you. Uh, Kim, would you mind if I help myself to some pet uh, as a meds? I'm not here to tell you what to do, detective. Eh, whatever. I'm not taking them. You stand and exit the booth. Well, I could always use an extra outfit, so, uh, sorry, Rene. I suppose Rene is not going to be needing it anymore. It's a bit too colorful for my taste, though. Hmm. I'm done here. Let's see, Royal Cup Hank. Fantastic. Try not to wear it with other similarly colorful clothes, okay? No promises. Let's see here. Um, plus one to Ravishalian nationhood, proud nationalist, and Royal Cavalier pants. Let's see. This beautifully adorned jacket of the Royal Cavaliers has three stars on its shoulders and the word Capitan uh, written on the chest, neatly patched here and there. It's impossible not to feel love for the fatherland when you wear it. Royal Cavalier pants. These pants are made from synthetic lightweight fiber and designed to let the cavalier's legs and groin breathe. Red stripes are there to inspire courage, while the golden stripe symbolizes the patriotic flame in the wearer's heart. Oh, this thing looks fucking ridiculous. Oh, God. <laughs> this thing looks so stupid. Hmm? Wow. This jacket makes you feel strong. As if your blood is mixing with that of the venerable Philippian loyalists of old. Uh, oops, didn't mean. Uh, didn't. Mm, oops, didn't mean. Uh, wear a nationalist jacket. Let's. All uh, right, where are you going with this? And does my blood need mixing, or is it as good as is? Apologies. You're right. The need for a strong central government has always been clear to you. You're a true patriot of Revachol, born to do it. It's time to clean up the streets and restore the city to its former glory. Whether you like it or not, this jacket gives you serious nationalist cred. Eh, uh, whatever, I'm just gonna... Uh, you know what, whatever, I'm just keeping it just for the sake of keeping it.
You don't know that uh, that uniform just made me look freaking ridiculous. A rusting control panel with several. You're back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Let's see. Erratic yet thorough. Been in the war for two days. Been in the war for many days. Precarious world. Alright. Let's give it a shot. And as it's always been, it's impossible to open a container with the rhetoric. Maybe you're losing your mind. Hmm. A pile of cargo boats used for heavy lifting. One says vermilion. You know, just like the scene at the hanging. Oh, Leo is still there. Uh, Leo, Leo, in the future, can we keep this greeting shorter? Sure, mister, absolutely. I'm always willing to help out nice fellows such as yourself. Oh, that one. Tell you. Hmm. Let's see, scattering of bullet holes. Let's see, visual calculus. Well, if anything, I got myself a useful pair of pants out of it. I mean, hey, they might not be Matthew Perry's pants, but hey, at least I got some pants. And for, I'll give you like five points for anybody who gets that joke. For do it, for do it, sky, yay!
The worn and beaten wooden. Hmm. Oh, sorry. Yes. What about Rene? I took the. Strange how old cunt sound almost gentle when he says it now. Yes. I just don't know, officer. Uh, I wonder if I should. Uh, yeah, I wonder if there's an option for him uh, to give him Rene's uniform. It'd probably be nice to do so. Let's see here. All right, so I had to be like in a certain area in order to use the uh, use the uh, teleporting. Got it. Oh yeah, I forgot we could talk to these guys here. Let's see here. set up for you, buddy boy. Right, good to see you too, friend. So what do you want? I've got smokes. They're cheap. Very cheap. I've got pills now. Great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. Spirits I can let go for 300 real. I also have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. Amphetamine? Aye. By amphetamine, I mean speed. Uh, uh, I thought I thought by speed you meant amphetamine. Aye, what I said. Right, got You're it. Good, my man. Now what can I offer you? Aye, by amphetamine I mean speed. I think you didn't hear me when I said I'm a police officer. You sure did, buddy boy. That's why I said amphetamine. I mean speed. I mean amphetamine. I got both. Right, good, got good, it, my man. Now what can I offer you? Uh, quite the business venture you set up here. Oh, the system's been good to old Rosemary here, and I'm milking her like a bitch goat in the backyard. What do you mean? You see, friend, man makes his own luck, and I made mine real good. Got my hands on three bottles of liquor X squeeze, sold two to the fellows around here, and immediately invested the profit. Bought cigarettes, bought beer, even bought a bit of speed. And look at me now. I got everyone on my hook. The hook? Where is it? I can't see it. Let's see. Well, it looks like you're. Oh, uh, I'm already looking for Kuno. Uh, think. Well, it looks like you're on your own hook too. Of course, of course, of course. It is what it is, you know. What it's always been. People, buddy boy. It's the people. Why does a bottle of spirits cost, uh, cost 300 real? See, friend, it's real valuable. Worth every real, if you catch my drift. Got it from a bit of a business venture. Uh-huh. You know, it's funny, actually. <laughs> He's finding it difficult to focus his watery gaze. What is it? What? What do you mean, what? What did you think was funny earlier? This guy, this guy. Uh, where'd you get the bottle of spirits from? Oh, this is medicinal spirits. The good stuff. Got it from the doctor's office. I've got one of those scientific ampoules a few months ago. Torpedo, they call it. It's supposed to keep a man from taking a drink. Didn't stop me for shit, that's for sure. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. Uh, sounds a bit dangerous there. It was. 
In a week, the goddamn kidneys started giving me all kinds of help. Finally, the missus took me to a private doctor's office. Not a charity, the real thing. Those arseholes. Those arseholes charged me four real to remove the damn thing. But I came out on top after all. But, uh, okay, how? The idiots left me alone in there. Now, I used to teach high school biology. I know what doctors use to preserve dead fingers. Quite three cans of this blue medicinal stuff from the back room. Threw the snakes out and voila! What's left is this beautiful blue stuff. 98.7% almost pure alcohol. Two I already sold to these fine gentlemen here. But this last one is yours for three real if you want it. Don't say it. I thought it was 300 real. Uh, no, not really, no. So what do you want then? Let's see here. I'm off. In the civilized world, it's a custom to tip the shopkeep, friend. But come back anyway. The noxious odor emanating from the drunken man is strong and familiar. Don't you call her? Yeah! Don't you call Abigail! Who's Abigail? Uh huh. Abigail. Don't you fucking call Abigail. Never thought you'd see such a thing in your life. But this guy's a little too drunk. Who are you? What's your name? Don't call Abigail! Where am I? What is this place? The man hiccups, then mumbles something unintelligible. Why shouldn't I call Abigail? He snorts and beckons you to lean in closer. Don't call Abigail. Don't call Abigail. Hey, I'm on an important official investigation. I demand you answer my questions. There's no use in yelling at drunks. He's barely holding it together. The drunk man starts coughing a really disgusting hacking cough he does not sound well at all tell me about your friends don't you fucking call her hear me abigail don't 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 call there was little chance he'd be a reliable witness anyway uh, can you blame me i have to try all right let's try door number three Hey, Tequila! Good to see you. How's business? How's the whole reality situation treating you? So what's happening? Wait, Tequila? Yeah, Tequila Sunset. How are the um, high-concept reality-based adventures proceeding? Let's see. I don't know. Pe uh, let's see. Don't, uh, I don't know. People tell me I'm a cop. I'm getting used to that. It's good to hear that you're on top of things. Talking about used to, did you know that I used to be a real mover and shaker? Sadly, things aren't going that well in Idiot Doom Spiral Land. Haven't found those keys yet. Haven't won that great piece of ass back. No word from my business buddies. Idiot Doom Spiral, huh? This is bound to be a good, high-concept conversation. At last. No, uh, what do you guys do around here? We are saving the world. Please! Please don't call! Yep, or... Don't call! Yep, a regular Justice League around here. Okay, we're drinking. We're drinking alcohol. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once, a long time ago, with enterprise, creativity, and willpower. But that didn't work out. So now, it's a pirate's life for me. What's a uh, tequila sunset? You keep saying it. It's you. Your tequila sunset. How do you know this? We've met before. Don't you remember? No, you sure don't. Nope. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you want to know how Tequila Sunset came to be? Go ahead, let's hear it. Let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. 
Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. And by Tequila Sunset, I mean you. The man, the myth. Wait, did we meet on Friday? Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get pissed drunk. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer, and that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's pretty high concept, if you ask me. That sounds about right. It is. Mm. Oh yeah, that's totally your style. Mm. The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. Oh yeah, not the first time this came up. <clears throat> mm. Hey man, I'm not judging. This life's a valley of woes. Some of the highest concept people in history have killed themselves. And been drunks. Either way, it was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Marvin Alcoholics, got our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this, we get our drink on 24-7. Makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Do you remember the sound of wood cracking? The billboard? Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just the reality we're in. Naturally. Anyway. There was a brief silence, a gasp of silence, if you will, followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast at top speed. Sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. What we saw was a sight to behold, a beat up police carriage containing you, right there on the beach, you revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. The time hath come. So naturally, being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come. To which you replied, The time hath come for tequila sunset. The end of all things. Oh god, what happened next? Uh, mm, say nothing more dignified that way. After which, your reality contracted. You jammed the pedal, plowed right off the jetty, and threw the ice. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit, like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us, which you naturally agreed to. We asked about the whole tequila sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now and insisted that we all call you that from then on. Wait, so is tequila sunset an event or a name? I'm not sure. I think you were the event. Tequila Sunset. You know, as opposed to a Tequila Sunrise, which is long gone. Uh, my real name's Harry. No, that's just what your mother called you. Your real name is Tequila Sunset. Just embrace it, brother! How long did we party for? Hours. It was an all-night drinkathon. Then, at some point, I think it was Sunday morning, you got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revacholian women. How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. How one of them fucked you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up and left without saying anything. Wow, that's quite a story. Yep, sounds about right. Yeah. I bet Tequila's a fucking legend around the precinct. You must be proud to work with him. If you only knew. 
Uh, did I tell you anything specific about this person that fucked me? You were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got fucked real hard, and that we've all been fucked too. No one's fucked me. I do the fucking around here. Abigail. It seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say you're still working through some shit. Did I mention losing anything else? Beside your gun and your badge? You said something about your hope or heart or something. To be honest, the details are a little hazy. In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage too? That's a big one. Did I say anything about my colleagues? You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers whose main interest was cramping your style. No specifics, though. It was more about you that night. You were the star of the show. Uh, did I say anything about the case? Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. And that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. Uh, well, good thing I uh, good thing I came back to the reservation, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the amnesia was probably the best thing that ever happened to Harry. Can we? Did we talk about uh, politics? Yeah, you said that it was okay that you crashed your carriage because the spectral hand of the market was guiding you. This was before you started talking about how the pinkies were always trying to fuck you. Pinkies? Uh, you know what? Never mind. I don't want to know. Did you get a read of what kind of cop I was? You kept apologizing for being such a bad cop and for the damage you inflicted on everyone around you. Yeah, sounds right. You also kept pausing to knock the heel of your hand against your temples, saying, Stupid, stupid, stupid. I don't need to hear anymore. It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. Hmm. Uh, you seem you uh, you seem like you're characterized by your storytelling ability. Want to tell me one another one sometime? Whoop de do. So now I'm a fucking storyteller. Right? Why not? Better than a beach bum. Yeah. Want to tell me how you became idiot doom spiral? It depends, really. Are you willing to help me out? Oh goody, more side quests. The gleam in his eyes and the slouch in his posture is so incredibly familiar. You might get scammed here. I have a feeling that this is going to cost me a lot. No, the reality of the situation requires a rather modest contribution. A little motivational package. You want booze, don't you? I don't want it, man. I need it. Can't tell stories without it. Dry stories are boring, you see? So, have you got anything for good old idiot Doom Spiral? A bottle for a story seems fair to me. Here, I got some point and I I got some sweet Commodore Red. Let's see. Classy. Hey, Spiral Boy, you gonna share that? Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. Something happened to you. Something happened to me too. My actual name is George, but around here, you are. Yeah, idiot doom spiral. I get it. I was so. once a reasonably high net worth individual, a founder slash junior partner at a high concept creative services agency. When my story begins, I had just landed a major contract with an insurance firm. Go on. I used the profits from my agency to finance what I call cultural incubator abstract value generation value per person high concept stuff i developed the paradigm worked within the paradigm but the burden of leadership weighed heavily on me so i went jogging every so often to keep myself sane wait how many people did you have working for you 22 full-time employees an all-star team a potentially historical set of individuals. Worrying about them often kept me up well into the morning hours. I could probably use a good run myself. It helped, truly. With my trusty Sansarik Likra tracksuit, I felt like I could conquer the world. But now dreams are worn thin. 
much like my tracksuit. Uh, what happened? One day I left on my evening run. As you may know, it's impossible to clear your head when you're distracted by the sound of keys jangling in your pockets. His eyes are clouded. His dilated blood vessels encircle in his irises like stinging brambles. His eyes are your eyes. So I removed the key ring and put the keys for the front gate and the apartment into different pockets to stop the jangling, you see? At least, that was the plan. I was halfway done with my usual lap when it started to rain. The reality situation became very wet, very quickly. How wet are we talking exactly? Wet, okay? It was raining really hard. All right, fine, sorry. I made my way back home and discovered that I didn't have the key to the front gate. I'd mixed it up with the key to the letterbox, which was useless. Naturally, the situation required me to climb over the gate, which I did. There was no climbing down because I slipped and landed on my ass. Ouch. Ouch, indeed. Reality was looking rather grim just then. Me lying on my ass in a mud pit in the middle of a heavy shower. But when life knocked me down, I always got up. So I made my way across the yard. Standing in front of my apartment door, fumbling with my pockets, I realized that I'd also forgotten my apartment key. Oh, you... Oh, oh, you gotta be shitting me. I wish I were, Tequila. I wish I were. Instead of my apartment key, I'd taken the key to the office. Okay, so what happened next? I rang my neighbor's buzzers. It was late, and most of them didn't even answer. Those who did assumed I was trying to sell them something and hung up before I could even explain the situation. People are naturally wary of ad men, you see? One moment someone chats you up, five minutes later you've bought a box of edible lingerie and a strap-on. Yummy! I don't begrudge them, especially since I was known to be... one of the best. Ah, uh, silver tongue huckster, eh? Just then, I experienced a moment of clarity. I still had the key to my office. I could wait out the storm there. But when I reached my office, I remembered that I'd asked one of my producers to change the locks that day. And since I hired only the best, he'd already done it, and I couldn't get in. Anyway, long story short, life spiraled out of control. I haven't gotten into my apartment for years, and my girlfriend left me because she didn't want to date a homeless man. The company... well, you see where I'm going with this. Uh -huh. So, now you've heard my tragic tale. What do you think? Wait. Like nothing you've ever heard, huh? Let's see. Uh, wait. Is that it? I feel like there were some steps missing here. Tequila, I've thought about this series of events for a long time. If there was anything else to it, I would have thought of it by now. Why didn't you go to the authorities? Yeah, you could just ask, Hey, I uh, forgot my keys. Could you help me get inside? Well, at one point they came to me, but, you know, I, I didn't have any ID on me. So they tossed me in jail for two days. I can't say it increased my faith in the RCM. No offense, gentlemen. Eh, uh, none taken. Uh, I literally can't... Uh, you do realize all this... Uh, let's see. Uh, I, I literally can't believe it. Me neither, Tequila. When I lost my keys, I lost more than access to my apartment. I also lost my leverage over humanity. I wasn't a high-concept creative director anymore. I was just some homeless asshole with a premium Sanserique Lycra tracksuit. I'm sorry to see why you called yourself Idiot Doom Spiral, because yes, you are a complete idiot. You can't imagine what that does to a man's confidence. Um, anyway, that was all the story one bottle gets you. Almost empty, this one. Uh, why do you keep losing all your stuff? Good fucking question, Tequila. If I knew the answer, you think I'd be hanging out on a beach in this formerly premium, but now extremely dirty, two-piece Lycra tracksuit? I used to own my reality situation. My business buddies and I had our own creative services agency. I had a nice apartment, an even nicer piece of ass. But somehow it all got away from me. Now I can't hang on to anything. 
Just last week, I stole this nice new jacket. But then I lost it too. The only things I haven't lost are these two drunks. A lost jacket? Sounds like a mystery you could look into. Hmm. What's the name of your agency? My agency. Man. The Boom Boom Room. Our concept was combining high art with the lowest forms of marketing. The color red, breasts, and oil painting. I convinced my partners to reinvest some of our profits in an even more high concept cultural incubator called Thin Air. The artists were happy, the clients were happy. I was financing a group of poets in East Rebishal who were developing a new universal poetic language. But then it all went to shit. Sounds intriguing. What say you, Art Cop? Hmm. If it sounds like it makes no sense, that's because it doesn't. Let's see. It's so high concept, I have no idea what it means. Let's see. Man, mixing high and low, commodifying culture. Let's see. Let's see. It's so high concept, I have no idea what it means. I know. It was fucking awesome. Until I went on a jog, unleashing a cascade of doom that washed it all away. My, I, I was... So, if it sounds like it makes no sense, that's because it doesn't. I know. It was fucking awesome. Uh, Too bad I went on a jog, unleashing a cascade of doom. What's up with the tracksuit? What? You've never seen 100% Lycra before? Go on. Feel that primo material. You really shouldn't touch it. I'll just admire it from afar, thanks. That might be the right idea. This here is one of the last of its kind. Should probably be in a museum, honestly. Can't get it anymore. It was too primo, even for Grad. By primo, he means possibly carcinogenic. Lycra, TM, was a synthetic fabric developed by manufacturers in the middle 40s. Notable mainly for the swishy sound it makes as the wearer passes by. It's also known to become extremely itchy if not properly cared for. Oh. Wow, you're lucky. He never lets me feel it. That's because your paws are fucking filthy, Rosemary. We're right next to the bay. You could wash them any time. Uh, what about the other drunks? My fellow members of the Union of Moribund Alcoholics? They're exactly what they look like. Hey! Tequila! You wanna buy some speed? Shut the fuck up, Rosemary. He's a cop, remember? I thought he was a cool cop. A gurgling sound comes from the direction of the non-responsive man. And yeah, you're already acquainted with abs. So yeah, that's basically us. We drink together. What's this about a lost jacket? Tequila, it's a verifiable tragedy. It was practically brand new. Sure, it didn't really go with my Lycra threads, but it did itch a lot less. Say, you're a detective, right? Maybe you can help old Doom spiral out. Solve the case of the missing jacket. What do you say, Tequila? You mean this jacket I discovered on the boardwalk and had clean on a whim? Hmm. Nah, this isn't it. Found? That's medium concept stuff. Totally not my style. So you're saying there's another lost jacket out there somewhere? It's a big world out there, Tequila. A lot of lost jackets in it. Don't know why you'd think this could possibly be mine. Well, it was the only lost jacket I found, so... Doom Spiral. Ain't that the jacket you stole the other week? Not on your fucking life, Rosemary. What's wrong with you people? Like I'd be caught dead wearing foul, like some low-concept bicycle courier. Tell you what, Tequila. Why don't you just hang on to that one? I'll get another jacket. Someday. At least you get a nice jacket for your troubles. Alright. Uh, you got any more stories? I do. But as you can see, my fuel tank is running quite low. If you catch my drift. Uh, I already get... Oh, uh, I don't have any on me right now. Uh, let's see. 
Jeez, I already gave you some. I don't want to keep doing that. Then I can't keep on telling the stories. All right, well, hold on. Be seeing you. Too, tequila sunset. Okay, let's step aside for a second. I have something I want to talk about. Uh, sure, Kim. What's up? I've been meaning to have a little chat with you about your sense of style. My style? What about? It's, well, a little eclectic, don't you think? How would you even describe what you're wearing? Eclectic is for pop music with indigenous percussion. You're a sartorial maverick. Well, uh, let's see. Hobo chic, superstar casual. Let's see. I'll describe what I'm wearing. Uh, they're just clothes, Kim. Who cares? You know the expression, the clothes make the man. The right outfit in the right situation can make all the difference in the world. Let's see. All right. You're sharp dress, man. We can be style buddies. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, detective. A warm smile. Anyway, we should probably get back to the case. Let's go. All right. Yeah, no, I just wear whatever, uh, whatever needs to be uh, worn for the occasion, you know? Oh, yeah, the points are racking up there. Probably should start investing in them at some point. All right. Well, anyways, next time when we come back, we'll hear more of Idiot Doom Spiral's uh, little, uh, little stories here. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, all right. Till next time, folks. This is David on David's brain. See you when I see you. Bye bye.